Yo, what's up, Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> My mic just fell. <laughs> Twitter and Instagram followers, it's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants video. Well, in this case, a Dallas Cowboys, Tampa Bay Buccaneers video. Well, it's a recap of. Uh, my uh, thoughts on the NFL opener, which by the way was a fantastic kickoff game. Amazing to finally have football back and, and how lucky we were to have that game as the opener. It was a lot better than I expected it to be. A lot of uh, different things happened that I did not expect at all. And I guess as a Giants fan, I'm gonna give my thoughts on what happened and especially my thoughts on the Cowboys because a lot of fans uh, right after the game and even the morning after are kind of high on the Cowboys and I don't necessarily blame them but I guess I'm also here to kind of disprove that a little bit but before we get into it first things first new merch is out there the killer bees killer bees merch is now out there because we got three dudes with three bees on our team specifically with the running back core Saquon Barkley uh, Devontae Booker and Gary Brightwell now available on the Teespring score go ahead check it out get yourself a t-shirt or something but then getting into the game now so the Cowboys really really played the Buccaneers well you know uh, it was a game that the uh, Buccaneers won I think it was like 31 to 28 or something like that or was it 29 to 28 whatever the case is it was super super close uh, closer than it probably should have been and the Cowboys really showed up and I think they did put some of the league on notice now their offense was exactly what we expected it to be uh, let's not pretend as if we didn't know the Cowboys offense was going to be one of the best in the league. They were supposed to be one of the best in the league last year, but Dak went down and, well, kind of their offense went down. That's just how it was. They also had injuries on the offensive line. They had a couple of those guys back for this game. They still have one more lineman that was injured that's coming back in week two, I believe. But the Cowboys offense was how it was supposed to be. They are uh, at some points during the game looked like it couldn't be stopped. At some points during the game, Tampa Bay really got the better of them. Um, I I was genuinely surprised at how well the receivers did against the Bucks pass defense. Oh, excuse me, against the Bucks pass defense. But then I heard one of the commentators say that the Bucks have a couple injuries in their secondary as well. Uh, their offensive line held up well, which is to be expected. This is, of course, still one of those Hall of Fame offensive lines that the Cowboys have built over the past decade. Um, there was a couple of times where Vita Vea, for example, was getting through or on a blitz. Uh, Levante David or, or Devin White would get through. Maybe once JPP got through. But we're talking about one of the best defenses in the NFL here in the box and one of the best pass rushes and versus one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. So it was a great matchup to see both sides got their wins and whatnot. Regardless, the point is the Cowboys offense was what we expected. Dak came back. He showed that he still got it. He passed for like around 50 times. Absolutely incredible, but also worrying if you're a Cowboys fan because Zeke, I think, only finished the game with like 22 yards or something like that. They didn't really use Zeke that much. In fact, they didn't really use the run game that much. Tampa Bay is the same thing, by the way. But of course, we're here to talk about the Cowboys as a Giants fan because that's the NFC East rival. And I'm trying to keep my eye on every rival this year. But Zeke didn't really um, do much. I'm not sure if that was by play design, if that was by Kellen Moore, or like if that was by Zeke himself. Maybe he didn't show enough during practice or he didn't show enough during the first couple of runs he had for them to continue giving it to him. But what everybody is talking about, including myself last night a little bit, was the Cowboys defense. Now I said that the Cowboys defense doesn't look that bad. And then I clarified myself saying, it doesn't look as historically bad it was as it was last year. Is it good? No. Is it historically bad though? Also no. I think it's still kind of a bad defense. Like, listen, they got turnovers and I'm sure a lot of Cowboys fans are going to hang their hats on the fact that they got turnovers. You know, I think they got, what is it? Two interceptions and two fumbles as well. One of the fumbles I think was legit. The one that Chris Godwin uh, carried all the way up almost to the end zone and fumbled. That one was also kind of legit. Although I will say you don't see receivers really just sort of not hold on to the ball like that it's almost like they had oil on their gloves you know what i mean you don't you don't see that happening that much then the uh the end zone interception that really doesn't count and they had the uh the tip pass into an interception so out of the four turnovers that i remember i would say like three of them were good i know people want to 
I, I know that people want to really blame or not give the Cowboys credit as Giants fans, but I personally think that for turnover's sake, they were they they were good. They could get it, and they did honestly what they needed to. I mean, we're still in a situation where it's week one, so you know, obviously, all we have to judge is this. But as of right now, they're in a very similar situation to last year where the offense has to score basically 30 plus points to win a game which means you got one of the worst defenses in the nfl they're still there but i don't think it's historically bad um getting back to the turnovers i don't want to blame or i don't want to not give the cowboys credit for the turnovers and for the way the defense performed but at the same time the buccaneers were horrible you know the buccaneers offense their receivers at times couldn't catch uh, the receivers were dropping open passes. Uh, I think it was a Chris Godwin pass where he had mad separation, was wide open, and Brady put the ball right where it was supposed to be. He just dropped it. Uh, at points, it just looked like the Buccaneers' offense were just not trying, or they were like selling the game, man. It looks like they were just completely unprepared. So, as for as much credit as I want to give the Cowboys' defense for their turnovers, I also got to acknowledge the fact that this is not how the Buccaneers offense is going to play all year. This is not how they were supposed to play this game. They were super sloppy. They were super rusty. Uh, there was a lot of bad mistakes that frankly won't be made going forward. And it was a game that the Cowboys probably should have won because they should have taken advantage of all those, um, all those mistakes. And of course, their kicker left like seven points on the board as well. Regardless, the Buccaneers won though. And it had the Buccaneers played up to their own standard, I don't think it would have been this close had the cowboys actually made all their kicks they would have won right it's a give and take situation but getting back to the original thing the whole reason oh my god i keep hitting my mic <laughs> getting back to the original thing the whole reason i'm even doing this uh video in the first place is uh, are the cowboys a legitimate threat to the nfc east if their defense improves then yes and i mean this was always the conversation if their defense improves as of right now, it still looks like it's about to be one of the bottom tier ones. If it could somehow just move to be good enough for that offense, where instead of scoring 30 plus points a game, all Dak and the Cowboys needs to do is score like 25 a game. If it could get to that point, then yeah, they're a legitimate threat because that's one of the best offenses in the NFL. But as of right now, they got to score 30 plus. Um, I will say one part of their defense I was kind of legitimately impressed by. I guess would be their line they were getting pressure at you know at some times you know demarcus lawrence was getting a little bit of pressure but their corners to me still look suspect i mean brady was targeting their second and third corners like every single throw mike evans didn't have that much because he didn't need to have that much in terms of receptions and targets uh their linebackers uh for the cowboys keanu neal i saw him out there Michael Parsons, of course, Michael Parsons, I'm not about to rag on the dude because this is something we knew before he was drafted. And, and for Giants fans out there that want him for the Giants, this is why I didn't want him for the Giants because we needed a coverage linebacker. Parsons is a line of scrimmage monster. He's somebody that blitzes. He's somebody that stuffs the run. He has like no skill in pass coverage. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna put that out there. Can he improve and gain it throughout his career? Yes, but immediately he does not have it. Uh, but the Cowboys linebackers, not impressed by. I was really just... I guess I like their defensive line, you know what I'm saying? They were good with the tip drill, obviously, but that's still a secondary that I could see getting roasted by teams that have more than one weapons on the receiving and in the passing game type of thing here. So overall, the Cowboys a threat if they develop their defense. As of right now, nah. As of right now, I still see it as a Washington football team, uh, New York Giants race for the NFC East. Call me biased, call me stupid, call me whatever you want. I, I really do not care because we're speaking facts right now you guys scored 29 points you got like four turnovers and you still lost right your defense has to do better because your offense did everything it could zeke has to do better as well but if you're out there passing for like how many yards did he pass for 403 yards with three touchdowns and you lose the game i'd say it's on your defense more than anybody else you know what i mean uh, but Giants fans, don't worry about it. We face the Cowboys twice a year. I still think we're going to play them hard. I still think that we're going to beat them at least once this year. I really do. Um, but as for the NFC East race type of thing, the one thing the Cowboys have going for them is not even their team. It's their schedule. They have a super, super easy schedule, man, based off of last year's records. They, the only other playoff team from last year that they play would, um, would be the Chiefs in week 11. So from week two all the way to week 10, 
They got nine playoff teams from last year. They have an easy schedule. That's why I'm going to just put that out there. The one thing they got going for them is how the schedule was built for them. All right. And uh, I, that, that's what happens when you were a third place team. You know, you got the third place schedule. We obviously we're going to have a harder schedule. Washington is obviously going to have a harder schedule. We'll see how it plays out. But they do got that going for them. You know what I mean? In terms of NFC E race, I still think it's between us and the, the football team. But we'll see what happens. Uh, once again, great game. It was very entertaining. Uh, you guys let me know what you think. Put your thoughts down below. Like, share, subscribe. And I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.